Welcome to the double displacement lab. As you can see, what you need are these two sheets, one that has the quantities and one that is here for you to make your observations. We also have the six chemicals that we're going to use, which are all listed right here, one through six, and we'll refer to them by numbers, sometimes by name. Then we'll use a spot plate to look for any reactions when combining all possible pairs of solutions. So for example, you're going to be putting in two drops of chemical number one and chemical number two. Well, that means you're going to be putting in two drops each of lead nitrate and silver nitrate. Whereas over here with number one and three, you're going to be putting in four drops of lead nitrate and only one drop of sodium dichromate. Here, we'll write down our observations. There may be no reaction, so we'll just say NR for that. But if there is a reaction, we want to describe what the precipitate looks like. How much of it, what color, is there a texture to it? And uh, what about the solution? Does that change color in any way? You'll note that all of the solutions are colorless, except for the sodium dichromate, which is orange. From experience, you know that a salt or sodium chloride solution is colorless. Looking at the formula for sodium dichromate, can you see why it's the dichromate ion that must carry the orange color? The silver nitrate is in a brown bottle because it's light sensitive. Starting with the lead nitrate, we'll have two drops here. Ask for four here. Ask for three on this one. Whoops, that's okay. Three here. And two drops over here. Now we'll put some silver nitrate, two drops into here with the lead nitrate. And let's see what happens. And it looks like, looking at it, I really don't see anything happening. Sometimes it's good to look on the dark background, sometimes the light, but nothing much happening here. Okay, I got my sodium dichromate. Put it in one. Okay, now let's get close up to that. And we'll see. After a little settling, you can see that what we have here is a yellow powder and that the solution is colorless. And we'll see that more and more as that settles. Okay, so magnesium sulfate, we're gonna take three drops. Get in on that. It looks like some white precipitate. the liquid's definitely colorless. Okay. Oh yeah. Okay. Now a few drops of potassium iodide. Three. That's pretty clear that that's getting a yellow powder, a little bit thicker. The liquid appears colorless. And four drops of potassium chloride. Three. Four. This one actually isn't going to happen for a little bit of time, so we'll have to come, we'll come back to that and check. Okay. So, took a while, but there's some. A little bit of white powder in there. And now for the row of silver nitrate. I'm going to put in three drops here. One, two, three. And I'm going to put in two, I'm going to skip one and then put two drops in and then two drops in this one. We're going to use 10 times more concentrated silver nitrate in this one to make sure the reaction goes to completion. One drop of sodium dichromate. Looks like a dark red powder and the solution is colorless. Now one drop of the magnesium sulfate to go with the concentrated silver nitrate. Okay. See, it's getting a little 
foggy. Can you see that there? Something's forming, but it might. Yes, now I see. Looks like a teeny tiny piece of rice. Now a couple of drops of potassium iodide. Okay, that looks pretty obvious. That's pretty. It looks kind of like a off-white clumpy powder, almost a greenish tinge. Now for the two drops of potassium chloride. It quickly coagulates into this clumpy white stuff, and the remaining solution is colorless. To save some chemicals, I'll just say that none of these actually produce a reaction. Now use your data sheet to record your observations of the results of each reaction.